Hi, my name is Lorna and today we're going to be using oil pastels and I'm going to be showing you some different ways to blend them. So I have my colors here. I'm going to show you a few different ways to get some different effects with oil pastels from blending them to not blending them at all and so you can see the texture. I'm working on mixed media paper today. There are papers that are designed for pastels and oil pastels that have more tooth to them. They have more um, nooks and crannies basically is what that means. So um, this paper is a hot press and it doesn't have a whole lot of tooth but it does have some texture to it. Um, mixed media paper is great for a lot of things because it's thick enough to stand up to some watercolor and adhesives like for collaging but it's also smooth enough to where it can hold up for acrylics and colored pencils and oil pastels. So today I have a few different things to blend with. I have good old-fashioned toilet paper. Um, hopefully you guys have some of that right now. Um, sorry if you don't. I have an old t-shirt that I've cut pieces of. Um, this is like a polyester cotton blend. Cotton tends to work a little bit better, but I used all of my um, cotton t-shirts to make face masks, so I don't actually have those. So I have some paper towel, and the difference between the paper towel and the tissue paper is texture and thickness. So this will give you a softer blend and this will be a little bit rougher. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is the difference between using those two. And then I also have Q-tips. I'm gonna show you a few different ways of using Q-tips. I'm gonna be using Q-tips by themselves dry, and then I'm gonna show you with oil. So this is just um, vegetable oil. You can use any kind of oil. The clearer the oil, the better. So I tried to find um, the oil in my house like that was the least yellow. Typically baby oil is going to be your best because it's not going to have an odor. It's not going to um, have a color to it. Uh, baby oil is a really great thing to have in your art kit because you can also blend color pencils with it. And recently I learned from one of our instructors, Steven, that you can blend um, color, color pencils with rubbing alcohol. So if you haven't watched that video, it's pretty entertaining. So I'm gonna be showing you how to blend these oil pastels. So I'm gonna start off, I'm just gonna do greens because that's the first one that I have here. You could also use coconut oil is another clear oil besides baby oil that I would recommend. Olive oils tend to be really yellow and rich in color. And so if you're blending warm tones, that might actually be kind of cool because you're adding a little bit of tone from your oil, but I would stick to as clear as possible so that you don't have any color transfer. It's a lot like when you use varnish or something, it tends to add a yellow overtone to your whole piece and it might, might not be something that you want. So take that into consideration. So I'm just gonna show you how each item blends and then I'll show you how to do a little bit of color mixing. So I'm gonna pick something dark that will show up on camera. And I'm gonna show you when you are using your pastels, you can lay on the color. This color is a little bit waxy. This is These are not the best oil pastels, to be honest. Um, I've had better brands than this one that are a little bit creamier and a little bit friendlier. These are just um, craft store their line that they have so all right so I'm doing some dark and then I'm just gonna light on each one so you can see the amount of pressure heavy pressure light pressure and if you wanted you could do your whole piece like this and do no blending at all you don't have to blend um, you could just rely on the texture of your oil pastels 
build up pigment in certain areas and lighten it in other areas, just like you would with graphite, um, building it up in that way. So I have here, and I'm gonna blend these together, and then I'm also going to blend them into another tone. So let me find something really contrasting that won't make brown. So I'm gonna do something yellow. So I'm gonna do a light. This one's actually a much creamier, so it must be something in the formulas. I was using a purple earlier that was just kept lifting, and that that's just with the the pigments that are in these particular oil pastels. Sometimes you run into that with certain art supplies like crayons. Sometimes some are waxier than others. Some will blend better. Um, I wouldn't say that price really plays into that because I've had some expensive art materials that are just the worst and I've had some cheap art materials that are amazing and vice versa. So I wouldn't really rely on price to tell you, you know, whether something's good or not. Um, brand power is pretty great because you can, you know, pick brands that people really promote and like. Um, brands that I like for oil pastels are Prismacolor, and I also like um, universities. There's are uh, more on the affordable side and it's here local to Sacramento. So university art has some really cool ones. Um, these artist loft ones, these are not the greatest, um, but I do have another off brand that's like a Walmart brand, I think. Yeah, they don't even have branding on them. These guys. Oh, Simply, yeah, so they're Walmart. Those ones are actually a lot better than these ones. So if you're looking for something affordable, those ones could be good. Okay, and then if you order something from other places, I have no clue whether it's going to be good or not. So one of the blenders I forgot to mention was your finger. Uh, oil pastels do stain, so if you get it on your fingers, the reds and things like that might stain your fingers for a while. I don't mind that. If you wear gloves, it's going to change the texture and the friction between rubbing, but you could wear gloves. Um, but I use my finger most often to blend oil pastels. So I'm gonna show you that. So if I am just using my finger and following the direction, I can blend these together. And if I'm blending two colors together, I wanna kind of blend back and forth. And you can see that those are blending right together. Now with your finger, just like all of our other blenders, when you are going from a dark color to a light color or to a con complementary color, you wanna make sure you wipe off. So I always have a rag or a piece of tissue next to me just to wipe off my finger. And you can see it rubs off quite nicely. You can also use a little bit of oil to get it off your fingers because oil is going to, um, these are oil soluble, which means they kind of degrade or melt using the oil. And that's because these have oil in them. So if you're using something like an alcohol based marker, like a Copic marker, you could use alcohol to blend that. And that's because you they are alcohol soluble. Like water-based Crayola markers or washable markers, those are water-based, so you can use water to make them spread. So it's a good indicator of your materials are made out of is this is oil pastel. So if you put oil with it, it's likely that it will be able to blend. It's not really a standard rule, but it is something helpful if you're looking for something to blend out your medium. So you know, I'll leave the oil for last because that's probably the most different. I'm gonna go move on to my t-shirt. A lot of these will give you similar results. I find that I can get powdery, really well blended results with my finger and then kind of more chunky results using other materials. Your tissues will tend to lift some of the color as well. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to, for all of my materials, kind of fold my piece into a point. So I'll show you that. So I just make a rectangle and fold and fold. And I'll do that several times. I'll open it up and refold it 
so that I can get multiple corners out of the same piece and that way I don't have to use as much material in order to blend. So I'm gonna start the same way. I'm gonna blend um, from the yellow to the green on this one. I'll probably do that for the rest of them. That way I don't have to switch it out. So you can see that it's lifting quite a bit of the pigment here. But you might want that. I mean, it, it really depends on what look you're going for. I like the intense, bold colors, and that's just kind of my artistic style. But if you want a nice, airy wash of color, this would be great because it almost lifted all of the extra pigment that I laid down in the dark area. So it, that all that this bit that you see here that's left by my finger has been lifted by this cloth. Okay, so and it didn't really blend this area as well. So let me try doing a back and forth. Yeah, not as much blending going on there as with my finger. Let me label these as I go. as I go along. So next is our toilet paper, we'll call it TP. You can also use facial tissue for this. Um, they're pretty much the same thing. You could use like a, a puffs with lotion um, and the lotion will actually move it along a little bit as well. So it might be a fun experiment. Um, if you want to try other things to blend with, you know, experimenting with art is always great. Just make sure that you're not mixing any chemicals together that could be harmful. So if you're unsure, look it up. If there's no information, um, you definitely just want to try and be as safe as possible when you're mixing, mixing chemicals together. Okay, so the tissue paper, your toilet paper, can sometimes do little, like, peelies all right depending on the quality of your toilet paper my toilet paper is not the best quality right now um so i think this is from the dollar store because that's who had it all right so i am getting a lot of the pigment left on there which is great there is quite a bit more of a blend here than with the cloth and it did leave quite a bit more of my darker pigment, which is good. But it is still um, more, more wispy than with my finger. So you can see even at the yellow, there's more pigment left with my finger than with the other two. And that's because, again, the cloth is lifting. All right, so the next one is paper towels. So paper towels, I think, are my second go-to because they have a lot, they stand up a lot more to wear and tear than the toilet paper. And they have a nice texture, which, let's see. So I have my point. This also builds um, a little bit more structure in your paper towel so that you can really get a nice point if you're doing fine lines. They do sell paper blenders that you could try as well, but when you're using a paper blender for oil pastel, it might be a good idea to have one for every type of color um, and just have like a bag full of paper blenders for, the, for doing pastel work because what can happen is that you can transfer colors using your blender and there's really no way to clean it. Um, so I, I don't really use those because I need something that I can dispose of or clean. And after a while, your paper towel will build up oil pastels on here, and that will make a different texture as well, because you'll be mostly blending with the pastel that's on there. Which you can 
blend with oil pastels and I'll show you that as well. See the paper towel gives me that pigment that I really like down here, but it also gives me more blendability. And I'm gonna do my back and forth. So right here you can see that it has a lot of blendability and if I wanted more yellow I can add more yellow to the end here. I just went and continued to blend. Um, this one is a lot darker than these two and it has about the same uh, vibrancy as this one um, but this one still remains with the texture. And if I'm using oil pa pastels instead of color pencils or markers I'm after that texture so I tend to lean towards my finger because I like the texture. So now oil, oil, you can actually make a paint using oil pastels and oil. So if I were to take a little bit of this blue, right, and just a dot of this oil. If you put too much oil down, grab a paper towel, dab some of it up, and if I move it around, You can see that the oil pastel is starting to dissolve into a little paste and then I can paint with it. So that's something you can do with a paintbrush as well. Um, again, with paintbrushes, very difficult to clean oil pastel out of your paintbrushes. Not impossible, not impossible, but I really um, recommend using a paintbrush that you only use for oil pastels. You can rinse it with a little bit of oil. Um, oils can break down the glue in your ferrule and your paintbrush and ruin your paintbrush. So I tend to use cheap paintbrushes if I'm painting with my oil pastel or just know that it is going to be sacrificed to the, the oil pastels. So, okay, so I have a little dot on here and I'm gonna blend and with this, I need to blend, you know, up and down, and then over here, I'll do the back and forth motion. So it takes a little bit of time to get the oil pastels dissolved, but you can get a really cool effect, especially if you spend your time, you go back and forth, up and down, little scrumbling motions. We learned that word from our instructor, Ruby, and it's, it's one of my favorites now. I'm scrumbling right now. So you can see that you can really get a nice overall solid foundation of color there. But this is definitely the most time consuming method that I have. But look at that blend. That is such a nice gradient. So you can see that you can get the most precision and you can get a really nice blend when you use the oil. So that is a great, great one to use. So none of these are better than the other. Um, it really just depends on the look that you're going for, the look that you want and the type of piece that you're going for. So if you're doing something that's sandy, Maybe you're doing an ocean scene. This could be really great for waves and sand because you have the texture and the difference in color right here. So you have the built up pigment. You have a little bit more texture from the oil pastels in there. Um, with the cloth, say you lay some down and it's really heavy and you just wanna lift some of that color back out. You could take your cloth and really lift some of that out. I'll show you that again. So. You can really just lift out some of that pigment that you don't want, right? And it goes right onto your cloth, so that's a great thing. And when you do charcoal, you know, you, you have different types of cloths that you will use. You might use a sheepskin chamois and that will give you a light overall mid-tone gray and you have different chamois for different colors. It's very similar to this as having different ones that will do different things, so. 
When I'm doing oil pastels, I like to have a lot of different options for blending. So the toilet paper works a lot like the paper towels, but the paper towels um, do hold up a little bit better. They won't crumble into your artwork like the toilet paper does, but the toilet paper will give you a little bit of a lighter color because it lifts out more of it. And it's lifting it out while crumbling. So it's kind of, you know, you have to dust it off, but it's fine. Paper towels, you get the same pigment as your finger and um, you really get a lot of blending. So it's kind of a, a mix between these two. The oil, um, the oil gives you a really seamless blend and it gives you a lot of precision, especially if you're using the Q-tip to do your blending. You could blend with oil with your paper towel, you could blend with oil with your finger, you can blend with oil with any of the things that I've shown you. So it's pretty versatile. Um, I am going to show you without, but it's pretty much the same as all of the other things. So I'm going to put down my color. I don't know if this is the same green or not. I put it away. Oh no, it's way lighter. And my yellow. And so if I just take a Q-tip, no oil on this. This is not my favorite to do because the Q-tip kind of disintegrates almost instantly and you're really just blending with that stick that's in there, which is, is fine. It's not, you gotta do a little back and forth. So uh, if you can't tell, there's like, it's almost gone down directly to this part. My cat is singing his song. I'm not sure what he wants. I think he got locked out of a room and that is unacceptable to him. Okay, so that's just with the Q-tip. Let me write that down. And then I'm gonna do another few of just blending with oil pastels. So for that, I need a darker color so you can see it. I'm gonna do a circle. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shade a sphere. seriously disgruntled today. I'm gonna use a darker pinky purple. Let's see, what do I got? Sometimes um, the color palette is a little limited. You can mix the colors um, to an extent by layering them or blending them together you have there. You could also do visual mixing. This is lighter. <laughs> I meant to grab darker. So I'm just building up some shadow and then I'm just lightly pressurizing all the way up and I'm gonna go in with a lighter color. And you can see that just going over this with my oil pastel, these colors are starting to blend and they're actually gonna transfer onto your oil pastel. So another thing why you might want some tissue is before you return them back to your package, give them a little wipe off. Um, that way when you put it back down on the paper or you can wipe it off before you use them. Either way, you wanna make sure that they're nice and clean so that you don't transfer it's a sad day when you have your white oil pastel and you go in for that super bright highlight and it has black on it and you just made your highlight a really sad muddy low light and you can't do much about it to fix it so definitely want to make sure your oil pastels are clean before you use them so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black just ever so slightly down here and then my white so my white is super dirty. I'm just going 
give that wipe. You can also rub it on your paper and just see when it runs the color that you want. So when I'm doing most art, just, it doesn't matter what it is, oil pastels, could be acrylic, watercolor. I usually have a swatch sheet. This is my swatch sheet. So um, I didn't grab a, a swatch sheet for my swatch sheet. But um, typically I will have a piece of the same paper next to my artwork so that I can do tests like this. I wanna see how it blends before I put it in my final piece. So I'm just gonna go in with my white. Be very careful not to hit any of your other colors yet. And then you're gonna go down into your white, into your color and blend. And you can actually use white as a blender, as you can see. It is blending quite beautifully. And then I'm gonna take this color, this peachy color, and blend into my shadow. So that was done just using oil pastels. And I could really finesse it and get up in there, but I just wanna show you how they blend. And I think blending with oil pastels can be really soft and quite beautiful. And you can add a lot of really nice texture in there. And then if you wanted to mix your colors, I'll show you that. Let's make orange. So I'm just gonna lightly put down some red. I don't have a true red in this palette. They're all kind of a blue red or a pinky red. Some of them are more of an orangey red. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use this one. And then I'm gonna add this warmer yellow to try to get an orange that I like. And then I'm just gonna go a little bit more yellow over top. And you can see it starting to blend right away. And you can really go back and forth and build up. Now, if I'm not blending and I'm not pushing hard, you're gonna see a lot of that white in between. Now, if I'll show you what it looks like if I press harder. So I'm gonna do a really rich, saturated red. Then I'm gonna press a lot harder with this one. When you're pressing hard, you wanna make sure that your fingers are towards the tip that you're holding, otherwise you're gonna snap it. If you snap it, just take the paper off and you can still use it. So I'm just gonna blend that in. And you can see how well they're mixing back and forth. Beautiful. So you can really see the difference between doing a light blend and a dark blend. And you can actually get like a faux graffito look with this. If you had another color down below that was a little bit lighter, you could take um, something and scratch it. I don't really have my, my all near me. Let's see, I'll do the end of a paintbrush so you can kind of see and get some little texture in there. So that's a great way to add some visual interest to your piece is just kind of playing around in it. And that's because it's really just building up that pastel. Let's see if you can see it a little closer. There we go. So you can see that the red is really shining through underneath the orangey color that I made. I could lighten that up a bit. I'll lighten this one by adding another color and you could just keep layering. You can add texture. lines through it. You can blend it back out. There's just so many things that you can do with oil pastels. You can smear it and get some really fine lines. That would be great for doing like moonlight. It would be really cool just to do a wash of the oil pastels over something someone's face in the moonlight would be kind of cool you could take any of your blenders you could add a little bit of oil and 
and you could really lighten those edges. Go over the lettering so you could see if you had um, some bolder colors underneath. Now if I was using something oil soluble this marker would bleed but these are actually alcohol based markers so they're not going to bleed whether I use water or oil. And then another thing that you can do with oil pastels is you could also just use them as is to create texture. Um, you could use them to make little highlights. You can sharpen them if you want to get a finer point or you can just rub them on your paper until they get flat on one side and then use the point. So they're, they're quite hard to control. Um, so a lot of times I will use tape as a resist for my oil pastels that were a um, I'll use like a circle and I'll fill it in and that way when I remove it it's a perfect circle because edges edge work with oil pastels can be quite tricky a lot of times my edges when I'm working with oil pastels are softer um, a little bit more washed out or I'll go in afterwards with a fine liner and clean up my edges so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'm going to show you a quick galaxy painting at the end so that you can see some of the applications in in motion so if you like this video please like and subscribe please check out some of our other videos and um, comment down below with some other things that you might want to see and we'll try to accommodate. Um, have a wonderful day.